A lot of y'all know I'm from Missouri, but you may not know Missouri is known as the show me state. I like that. I like to think that we Missourians back up what we say. So that's what I'm gonna do today. And a couple of months ago, almost exactly two months ago, we demonstrated how I like to do the girdle and squirt. You can use hack and squirt this time of year when the leaves are fully formed, but back in March, there weren't any leaves out and I wanted to terminate some of these trees as part of TSI, Timber Stand Improvement. I wanted to leave the best trees and take out the rest of the trees. And if there were two trees almost the same, but they were crowding the canopy, I would make a choice and take one of them out. The goal is to leave the best trees for wildlife. This is for wildlife, not commercial forestry, but the same principles apply. Although in commercial forestry, hopefully you could do a what's called a merchable harvest. You would remove the lower quality trees as a thinning, get some revenue from that, and allow the better trees to grow. Now, unfortunately, a lot of loggers do the opposite. They take the very best trees and leave the rest, and that's called high grading. We're doing the opposite here, but we're, we're not doing that, again, for timber value. There's not much timber value in this old oak stand here. We're doing this to improve wildlife habitat. And you look around, it's mainly brown leaves on the ground. There's no brooding habitat, nesting habitat, fawning habitat, no food. This was just a closed campy forest that for a couple months out of the year may produce some acorns. We can make it produce more acorns by reducing the competition between trees and get food during the growing season. Those forbs growing up in here it might produce a thousand more or less pounds per acre. That's awesome. And get some cover in here. Today is that show me to follow up. So we did this pre green up when it was colder. So we needed to use the girdle and squirt. And I took my steel chainsaw and just cut into the cambium layer, cut through the bark in what some people call the inner bark, kind of between this and the hardwood in the center. The center of a tree is dead. That's just, those cells are just there for structural support on a hardwood tree. The circulatory system called the cambium, or you may recall the xylem and phloem, is right inside the bark. And that's what transfers nutrients from the roots up or from the canopy down to the tree. It's the tree's circulatory system. And we take a chainsaw and cut through that. Now, if we stop there, there's all that energy in the roots and this would just be a mess with maybe up to a hundred or more stump sprouts coming out of bottom of this tree and to get thick and bushy. Be some okay quality food for the first year or two. Then it's 10 feet tall and super thick, never gonna be a good tree and no food, no cover because it's gonna shade out everything down here. So we girdle in or we cut in through the cambium layer, but not too deep. Then we take a little squirt bottle and we put some herbicide in here, about a milliliter or two for a tree this size. And that will terminate the tree, but it takes a while. And I walked in here to check on it today and I was shocked that a lot of trees we treated have already been terminated. They're not greening up. They may get a little flush later on, but they're clearly not gonna make it. And the trees that I wanted to leave in the center of this group got a full canopy. And that will allow that tree to actually spread its canopy on out, even though it's a bit older, and produce more acorns. My good friend, Craig Harper, Craig and I both went to Clemson University at the same time, had the same major professor, Dr. David Gwynn. Craig learned through a bunch of his work after Clemson that the best way to get more acorn production is reduce competition. So I want to bring you in here today and we zoom up and look around, but the tops are dead or dying, no leaves or little shriveled up leaves and this is standing but I can't push it over it's dead I won't be able to push this over for years it's not dangerous I'm not going to get hit in the head with the limb falling I hear that oh I won't do that it can't ever bow hunt in there can't walk in there that's not the case at all maybe this fall or winter we get some snow or ice or something little limbs how much snow or ice or wind we get you know size of my finger less start falling down a couple years later it decays a bit more and by that time, it's air dried and a limb, you know, two inches around weighs nothing because it's air dried and they're just shed. Usually what happens, you get a big wind storm or a real heavy snow, an ice storm, and several limbs will come down during that storm. But it's not all at once. Years from now, several years from now, this tree will decompose enough that maybe you could push over fall over. So, and then I get that comment, well, guys, you put poison in your woods. You put poison in your woods. I get that email all the time. I'm using a milliliter or two. 
if I took a chainsaw and cut this tree down, maybe I cut it up and made firewood, I'm putting more toxins out there from the fuel I'm burning, and I'm certainly not anti-petroleum fuels, but just I'm very realistic. I'm putting a milliliter or two of a herbicide in a tree. One of these herbicides has the same toxicity to mammals or to humans as toothpaste. You shouldn't swallow toothpaste, you shouldn't swallow that herbicide. And that is less than you think about all the bar oil coming off your chainsaw. If you run a chainsaw much, you know what I'm talking about. All the fuel. This is probably one of the best ways to do this. So it's just super excited. We're going to do this whole wood lot. This is about 10 acres over time. And I wanted to show you and zoom up and around. And you can see I've girdled the tree behind me. We're still just getting behind me because there's a bigger tree right back here, about 15 feet or so, that has a larger circumference, is straighter, and the crown or the canopy was slightly above the other trees. It's spread out more. Well, that tree can grow even more now without competition, not just for sunshine, but water in the soil, nutrients in the soil. And by taking these trees and terminating them, sun can come through, and now we can get grasses and forbs in here and we will expedite the growth of that grasses and forbs food and cover by running a prescribed fire through here. I'm super excited about this. It's a really easy and safe technique. I actually used a steel battery powered saw. It's light because you may, you know, girdle a tree, set it down, put your herbicide in or girdle two or three. You don't want to let that wound go for more than about five minutes because the sap will start healing the wound. That's what tree sap, one of its purposes is to heal wounds and the herbicide won't get into the circulatory system. So works really good with two people. I was actually on the saw and Tim was using herbicide and the two of us, we could walk right through the timber. It takes me more time to say, oh, I want to save that tree. I'll take that tree out. That takes more time for me than the process of cutting the trees. And because I'm only cutting it, you know, a half inch deep or so, that battery powered steel saw will last a long time because I'm just not working it that hard. So I want to give you an update on this. Follow through like a good Missourian. I told you, now I'm showing you, and I hope you can apply some of this information to where you hunt. Some people say, oh my gosh, that Grant Woods is such a heathen. He's talking about using the herbicide, and then he talks about creation. I'm going to take time today to explain that. Creation was perfect. Adam and Eve did what they were told not to do, and God told us creation fail. It's not perfect anymore, but we've learned and have the skills to restore native habitat. We're not going to get it back to creation level, but we can certainly improve it and go that direction. So yes, doing TSI and other things we do is a form of enjoying and restoring creation. Again, we're not God. We can't get it perfect but we can improve it and we can learn new techniques and ways and improve it more and more over time while we're getting some physical activity, some exercise, being outside, not on your phone, not from your computer. It's a great way to enjoy creation, but more important than learning these techniques is seeking God's will and applying it to our lives. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.